everyone, please welcome Dave Neary. Thank you. Okay, uh, what's this? Uh... Oh, okay. So let's do this so that I'm not completely lost. Let's see, does that work? Yes, okay. Hello, everybody. My name's Dave. As, uh, I'm sorry, is it Ralph? Wouter, as Wouter said. And I am, <coughs> among other things, the, the doc master, the mimo.org doc master. That means that I take care of managing the community, uh, managing, of organizing the community effort around documentation. And among other things, I do organize the MIMO Community Council elections. Okay. One lesson that anybody here who's ever been to a technical conference knows, there are always problems with Linux on... Oh, is that what happened? Okay. Mirror screens, apply, uh, keep this configuration. Close. Thank you very much. Good call. Okay. So today I'm going to present to you at the MIMO Community Council, which, hello? I don't think so. Is that you? Uh, you, have, you have sound. Okay. You have sound? Okay. So today I'm going to present to you the MIMO Community Council. Uh, it's going to be weird wearing this without any amplification, but that's okay. Um, which I think is an interesting case study of how uh, one company has um, tried to enable an independent community to, to empower itself and, uh, and to take some, some more uh, control of the project from, from, from the company that initially sponsored the project. So let's start off with the problem statement. What, what problem was the MIMO community trying to solve? was the MIMO Community Council trying to solve. And basically what you've got is, and this is something that you see in an, in an awful lot of uh, company-run uh, communities or company-sponsored communities, is that you've got your company down here that's kind of one entity, and yet there are 6,000 people in it. And then you've got the community, which is kind of another entity, uh, very little overlap, uh, typically, and again, you've got maybe three or 4,000 voices here. And so it's very, very hard for either side, either as a community member looking, in from, uh, looking into Nokia, or as a Nokia employee working on MIMO, looking at the community to try and, and, and get a coherent message coming across. What does the MIMO community think? The MIMO community can think everything from um, you guys should be doing something more like Symbian to uh, everything has to be free software. It can be, you, you guys need to be a, need to be a phone to uh, we need a bigger screen, um, you, you guys need to do a net top, right? So there is all this divergent opinion on the MIMO community side, and again, on the Nokia side, as an employee of Nokia, uh, do you have the authority to speak for Nokia? Probably not. There's going to be in, incoherent messages coming across from different working groups and whatnot. And it's very hard to identify the person that you should be talking to within Nokia for a component of the MIMO software, software stack, for example. And so there's a small intersection, and there are, there are kind of many messages, but no real coherent message coming across from either side. And so the goal was to have some kind of a group here and some kind of a group here that would condense uh, condense and communicate with the MIMO community and condense and communicate with Nokia and make sure that the right connections were being made. Now the problem is, of course, the communities are very diverse. As I said earlier, um, within the same community you have uh, uh, one announcement gets made. Uh, there's a specific story that I'm thinking of 
where uh, there was an announcement made of, I think it was uh, when MIMO 4.1 came out, the uh, OS 2008, um, or OS 2008.1, I can't remember exactly the version, but there was a lot more free software in there. There were some components which had been proprietary before which were released, and there was one guy, um, there was one kind of group of people who were asking, why is the contact application proprietary? Is there any business reason for the contact application to be proprietary? Which is a very reasonable situation to have. And then a, a very reasonable opinion to have. And then there was another group, a, 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 another very vocal group that said, well, wh never mind the contact opinion. Everything should be free. Okay? So as a Nokia director or as a Nokia manager looking in on this community, you're saying, okay, so we can't do one, maybe we can do the other, but you know, is that going to be enough to please the community? We're always talking about the community, this big, vacuous, cloudy thing. Um, so that's the problem. So how did we go about finding the solution of, of having the, the MIMO Community Council? Well, back in Linux Tag 2008, um, there was a brainstorm. The, the MIMO, the great MIMO brainstorm was announced. And this was a period of, I think, two to three weeks where Ideas were invited, things we should be doing, things that the community should be doing, uh, things that Nokia should be doing to enable the community to be more um, proactive, and so on. And um, at the end of that brainstorming period, we had two concrete plans. One short term, the 100 days plan, and one longer term, which we call the 2010 roadmap. These are the objectives that the MIMO community has between now and the end of the year. And in the 2010 roadmap, you had things like uh, enable community distributions. Um, uh, Co-production of documentation is in there. Uh, open development. Ensure that Nokia developers working on the MIMO platform are working in the community. And uh, in the 100 days, so kind of bigger, hairier goals, but they can be broken down into stages. And the 100 days plan included, among other things, um, creating a MIMO.org community council. Um, and it's important to underline that this is a community initiative. It's not something that Nokia said, we think that you guys should have representatives uh, that we talk to, and that's, you know, that's all we're going to deal with with the community. This is people from within the community, and, and oh, that font is really, really bad choice. People from within the community, not the font, the color. Uh, anyway, never mind. Uh, so notably, Jaffa, Lardman, and General Antias, uh, I think that's how he pronounces it, um, also known as Andrew Flagg, Simon Pickering, and Ryan Abel. Those are the three people that specifically pushed the idea, said, you know, we need to be sending a more coherent message to Nokia so that they can treat us better, so that they can uh, move further along the line of what the critical mass of the community is expecting. And um, so, as I said, it's important to note that it's, it's, it's a community initiative. But then again, the issue with um, all of these kinds of initiatives is that the idea is easy to express. We want to represent the community to Nokia, and we want Nokia to, to empower the community as a whole through their interactions with, um, excuse me, I have some notes. <laughs> Uh, empower the whole community through their interactions with, um, with the council. But the devil is in the details. So once the idea came out, it was, there was a lot of detail work to, to be decided, and that really is where I think the lessons are, uh, can be learned, and, and uh, you can go through the, the kind of the reflection process that we went through, and, um, and how we arrived at the situation that, that we got to in the end. So the first detail, which is very important, I think it's a problem that pretty much every community has, is if you're talking about electing a council, you're talking about elections. You're talking about who can be a candidate and who gets to vote. You're talking about, in some sense, establishing the notion of citizenship, of belonging to who, who is a MIMO.org community member. Um, and it's, you know, all, pretty much every community has this issue. Uh, the GNOME Foundation, for example, has voting rights. And, uh, and their, their system is simply, um, if you are uh, proposed by, uh, you, you propose yourself for membership and you give a 
a certain number of referees. So you're, in some sense, co-opted into uh, the foundation as a member. And that's how you get your vote. Other organizations, you pay a bucket load of money. That's the way Limo Foundation membership works, or the Eclipse Foundation membership uh, works. Although I think they now have individual membership as well, do they? Um, I don't know how, f how, how does, uh, how does, um, how does Fedora handle this issue? Do they have, uh, for Fedora elections, are there Fedora elections? Okay, so, so again, that, so this is a, a voting system. I guess you can repeat your, what, you, what you're saying. So in the, in the federal community... Yeah, it's on, it's on. Okay. So in the federal community, we have uh, different boards, which are according to the different parts of the project. So as well, the RPM, the ambassadors, uh, the marketings, and uh, all those boards are actually elected based on the community. So any people which has an account on the federal account system can actually vote for the people which are part of the board. Okay, so, so this is uh, getting an account on the Fedora system. Again, this is a, another criteria, and this is one that came up in, in MyMo.org, is do we consider anybody who has an account on MyMo.org to be a member of the community? It's something that you can do with zero effort. It requires no implication in the project. You can create an account, uh, leave it alone uh, just to, I don't know, sign up to a forum or something. Uh, leave it alone forever. You know, send one message, leave it alone forever, and then 10 years later you still have a vote in the MIMO Community Council. Is that the way that we want to vote? And we had very definitely two um, schools of thought in the MIMO community with regard to this issue. There was one school of thought that said, well, we need to make sure that the MIMO Council is a group of doers, a group of people who have contributed to the MIMO project in the past, and thus have shown, in some sense, their, um, their worth. That's a, not a very good way of putting it, but you get the idea. And then you had the second school of thought, which said that, well, you know, isn't that all going to come out in the wash? If we give everybody who has a MIMO.org account, this is everybody who has ever expressed an interest in MIMO, uh, if we give them all a vote, well then obviously um, the people who are not so, con not so implicated in the project are not going to vote. The people who are very implicated in the project are going to know who's worthwhile, uh, who's going to be a good representative or not. All right? Um, so there was a kind of a compromise we had, and the compromise was to use camera, Karma. Now, for those of you who aren't familiar with the MIMO.org community, there's a, the concept of Karma is that as you do stuff in MIMO.org, you get Karma points. So if you release a product, you get Karma points based on the fact that you released a product. If the product goes on to be popular and gets a good rating from the users, then your Karma goes up. If uh, you are a member of a number of projects, a number of sub-projects, your karma goes up. If you send mail, uh, email to a mailing list or if you post to, uh, to a forum, your karma goes up. And um, fixing bugs in Bugzilla is another example of, 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 a, of a kind of a thing that gives you karma, blog posts and so on. And so over time, people who do stuff um, tend to have their karma go up to a certain level. And uh, so we, we decided that we we're going to use karma as a criteria for both being a candidate in the election. We said you need 100 karma, which meant that there was roughly about 400 people who could be candidates. And to vote, you needed 25 karma, which meant that we, were, we had a potential, um, a potential electorate of, I think, about 1,800 people for the first election. <laughs> And indeed, for the first election, there was a major issue because the talk forums, which is a kind of a sub-project of, of MIMO, which was very, very distinct, really. You had, uh, it, was, it was a site called Internet Tablet Talk, which was not part of MIMO.org. And you had a whole bunch of people who were there uh, giving user support, uh, helping people out, giving feedback on the platform and so on. But it was essentially very, very isolated from MIMO.org. Even the people who were on the mailing list didn't know what was, going to, what was going on on the forum. And so on the forum, when people said, well, you're going to have an election, uh, who are these people going to be representing? They're not going to be representing me because I don't even have a vote. And so for the first election, we gave pretty much anybody who had a MIMO.org account a vote, 
and yet we kept the, the camera requirement for, for being a candidate for the elections. And in, in, in following elections, then we've, we've, we've integrated karma as something that, that you get from, from, from forum posts. This is, again, this is kind of controversial within the MIMO community because is somebody who does a thousand forum posts contributing positively to the MIMO community or not? And that really depends on what they're saying. Um, so it's a tough problem. And this is, this, this is the way we solved it in any case. Uh, some of the other questions that we had when we were talking about elections was how long is the term going to be? And there you've got the balancing act between asking people to commit a lot of time and a lot of effort um, and uh, potentially be in, be in a role for maybe a couple of years or you know, having elections all the time. And if you look at the timeline of an election, um, from counting back from the day that you declare the results the day before you close the votes, one week before you open the votes, one week before you close the nominations for the election, and one week before that you open the nominations for the election. So you've got a month from the moment that you announce the election date and open the nominations to the elections, the result being announced. Um, so if you've got a month of a process for an election process, which is, I think, a reasonably short pro I think the, the GNOME Foundation takes six weeks from the time that the election is announced until the the, um, the results are in. Um, if you're holding an election every three months, then you're always in election mode. You're never giving your council enough time to, to actually um, you know, take, take on the role and take on the mantle of, of the community representation that they're being given. Um, so there were a lot of other questions to, to deal with with elections as well. What's the voting method that you're going to use? And I know this is one that comes up in every single community we did have some criteria that we felt were, um, were important for a voting method. One was that we wanted to avoid very polarizing characters. And MIMO is a community where you've got uh, two divergent, uh, some very divergent views, and there are people who are very, very vocal, who have a very strong following, and yet don't represent even a significant minority of the MIMO community. So we wanted to have an election method which was not first past the post, or first five past the post, because the, the, we were saying to ourselves, in that kind of a situation, somebody who has 15% support of the community uh, will get a seat on the election and may be a, a negative influence on, on, the, uh, on the, the operation of the council, whereas if you do something like a proportional representation or a, um, a preference voting, uh, if that person is first preference for 14-15% of the community and last preference for everybody else, then the chances are he's not going to get the seat on the council. So we're avoiding very polarizing characters and avoiding uh, making the council ineffectual by having uh, that constant flame war type environment going on in, the council, in council meetings and in council interactions. Uh, so we wanted to avoid that type, of, that type of character. We wanted to avoid a complicated election system. We wanted to make sure that uh, it was easy to vote and that it was easy to understand um, how, how your vote was going to be counted and it was easy to count the votes. So, and easy to verify the result. Uh, so um, that automatically kind of punched uh, Condorcet methods out of, out of, the, out of the sea. We did, nobody understands Condorcet. Okay, two people understand Condorcet. Uh, I'm sorry. Uh, but nobody really understands Condorcet. So, so, um, yes, you can only count Condorcet elections with software, basically. It's difficult to count them by hand. It is, it is. So, um, there was, there was a kind of a, a, a fairly serious support within the community for uh, what's called preference voting, not preference voting, uh, satisfaction voting. Uh, so I can't remember the exactly uh, the, the name of the voting system that was proposed, but the idea is simply that you give every candidate a score from 0 to 100, and, uh, and you figure out, you know, if somebody, if somebody yeah, you kind of like the guy, you might give him a 70, and 
if you really don't like him, you give him a zero, and if you really, really want this guy to be on the, on the, on the board, you're going to give him a hundred. And then it all comes out in the wash, and you get your, everybody gets their more or less favorite candidates. But that kind of a voting system is, again, very difficult to verify, and gives you these really weird results where nobody is happy. Nobody has their favorite choice elected. Everybody has their kind of, the, yeah, middle of the road candidate selected. So the, the voting system we chose was a single transferable vote with um, fractional transfer votes. So the, the idea is you vote one, two, three, four, five for your five for every candidates. You can go all the way to nine or 10 or 11 if there are 11 candidates. And then votes transfer, if your favorite candidate gets eliminated or elected, then your second favorite candidate will get either the whole vote if your favorite candidate is eliminated or a part of that vote if your favorite candidate is elected and there's a surplus to be distributed to other people. Uh, so it's a fairly simple uh, election system. It's hand counted in places like Ireland and, and uh, New Zealand, and Australia, Malta. Uh, they use that system but without the fractional transfer. Fractional transfer means that the result is reproducible. Because if you don't use fractional transfer, what's used in Ireland is, is what, what they call random transfer. That means that if you have um, a quota of 100, once you get to 100 votes, you're elected. Somebody goes to 110. Uh, random transfer, you, you will take 10 of the 110 ballots and look at who's the second preference randomly and then allocate those votes to the, to the other goals, to the other candidates that are, that are second preference. Um, it's a handy system. It's useful. Um, but it means that if you recount an election twice, you can get two different results, which isn't very, which isn't very nice. So we chose fractional transfer, which uh, basically is hand countable, but um, it's much easier with software. Okay, so that's um, for the for the nitty gritty of uh, how are the council going to get elected, um, and who who can be a candidate and who can get a vote. Um, the next question, the major question, is what are the council going to do? And, uh, you know, it's not a straightforward question. It's, it's okay, now we've got people who, to represent us, you know, go represent us. Uh, uh, so the council took on some fairly major responsibilities. The, the, the mission statement, if you like, of the council was to distill and focus community ideas, to set priorities for the community, to represent community, uh, community ideas and communi community opinions to Nokia, and to communicate uh, official Nokia responses, to have kind of a, in some sense, a privileged communication channel with Nokia, and to communicate those official Nokia responses to the community at large. Uh, so the council works closely with uh, Nokia representatives, both technical and community marketing. Basically, uh, Kim Gill is, is the, the community marketing guy in, in, uh, in Nokia. And um, the council works very closely with him. But the goal, of course, is to encourage Nokia to, uh, and Nokia employees to become a tighter knit part of the MyMode.org community itself. Right? So to have Nokia developers developing in a public Gator subversion, to have uh, the Nokia developers be consider themselves MyMo.org community members, really. That's the, that's the end goal. So this is, uh, the, the, the community is not only communicating with these special Nokia representatives. That's what I want to communicate. Um, one other responsibility that, that, that they took on, a fairly major one, is uh, managing, in quotes, uh, the MyMo.org team. Uh, this is one of the things that Nokia did uh, very early on in the, in the project, which is, I think very novel in, ter in terms of, of other, commu of other uh, community corporate projects, corporate community projects. Um, I don't know how you, how would you say that? Corporate sponsored community projects? Something like that. Um, they hired people from the community to do stuff for the community. And, um, and no, you don't, you don't answer, to answer to us. We, we pay your paycheck but you don't answer to us. So I'm, uh, the first guy that they chose was Niels here. That's Berlin, so the beer wasn't as good as this weekend. Um, and Niels was hired from the community to be the webmaster, so to take care of MyMo.org infrastructure. He's since grown out of that, uh, grown 
even further in that role and he's now you know developing software taking care of the infrastructure and uh, managing in some sense uh, the rest of the team Andre Clapper came on board around, around the same time as me that's me um, and he's the bug master so this is somebody who's uh, making sure that bugs that come into mymo.org, Bugzilla, uh, recruiting a team as well, obviously, from, from the community, but making sure that bugs that come into mymo.org, Bugzilla, are triaged, uh, pointed, that the right person is pointed to them, and that the bugs are qualified if there are duplicates, they're marked as duplicates very quickly, and so on. It keeps, it keeps the bug database very clean and makes it much easier for professional developers uh, to work with it. Uh, this is Nokia developers, again, a lot of them were not, community developers before that. They, they were not free software developers, so they're kind of still getting used to this way of working. Having a bug, a bug master makes that a lot easier. And then I was the doc master uh, managing documentation and doing a lot of event management and uh, organizing elections and, and, and things like that. Uh, since then, we've, we've now got a dev master who I was hoping would be here, uh, who helps people from the community with packaging issues, uh, helps them package their software and make sure that it's distributed. Um, we've got a disk master, uh, Karsten Monk, who is uh, uh, working on Mare, working on a community distribution paid by Nokia. And we've got a talk master, this is somebody who's taking care of the community forums that I mentioned earlier. And he, again, is, is, uh, is paid by Nokia to maintain and, and, uh, and develop the, the community forums. So we've got a team now of six people that the, the MIMO.org, the MIMO Community Council, sorry, are... Uh, managing directly, setting our priorities. We meet them every month and uh, review the tasks that we've, we've committed to the year before, the, the, the month before, and um, plan the tasks for the next month. And this is a major responsibility. So you've gone from being a, just a simple community, a community member, you get elected, and all of a sudden you're, you're a member of a five-person management team. Right? So it's, 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 it's been a transitional period, but you can imagine what it was like before when we were answering to the community, you know, how, how, does, how does a community of 3,000 people set direction for somebody, right? So essentially, we were just doing whatever we felt was most necessary, and if people, you know, complained too much, then we said, well, maybe we should be doing something else. Um, having the, the council there and having that feedback constantly is, is definitely a big improvement for me. Uh, and even they had hiring responsibility. When, when we hired, um, when Nokia hired uh, Jeremiah to be the dev master, or contracted Jeremiah to be the dev master, it was the MIMO.org team that ran the interviews, uh, sent out a job announcement, decided what, the, what the, the, the role was going to entail, what type of person they were looking for, uh, and I, I, I helped them with that, but, but it would, they were the ones who made the final decision, uh, here's our choice, Nokia, please fund this person. Most companies wouldn't do that kind of thing. Uh, I think it's, a, it's admirable that Nokia are going in that direction and, and, and you know, in some sense, giving, giving a group of, of people that they have absolutely no control over uh, responsibility over you know, significant resources in terms of, in terms of the, the, the financial cost of, of six employees. So the inaugural council uh, was elected in September 2008. That's Berlin again. We were back there for the MIMO summit. Um, five members. The chairman is elected by the council. It's a small group, so more versatile, um, much easier to, to get agreement, but sufficiently large that we reflect the diversity of the community. Um, and it's been a positive experience. We've had some difficulties, for sure. Um, some of the difficulties have been uh, getting candidates. We've had, for most of the elections, there have been between nine and 12 candidates. So it's the same problem, I think, that the GNOME Foundation has, is that it, people see it as a big task, which is why we limited the, 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 why we limited the, um, the term to six months, because it's something that you can do for six months and then say, OK, I've, I've done my part and pass on. Um, we've uh, had some, so let me see, what was the? Oh yes, the, the, the difficulties were the community schism I, I mentioned with you, that the, the, for the first election we, we essentially said there's no go, going to be no camera, uh, camera requirement to vote in the election. Anybody who has a MIMO.org account can do that. But then this was a huge flame war that came back for us the second election 
uh, what do you mean I need 25 karma to be, to be able to vote? I voted in the last election, right? Uh, and so we had to have a referendum to settle the issue for once and for all. Um, we did that on the second election, and now I think the, the karma uh, issue is, is pretty much settled. Uh, karma calculations are continually being refined. Yes? Sorry? So there was a referendum to find yes. out who's uh, eligible for voting, who was eligible for... <laughs> Absolutely. Circular issue. Uh, so um, uh, that was the community council that decided, and they said, okay, people who have uh, an account before X date and have 25 karma get to vote in the referendum. Controversial decision. Absolutely. Uh, so. Uh, the karma issues and basically karma calculation has since been, uh, been, been addressed as well. So we have had difficulties, but we've had s significant successes. Uh, one of them I've mentioned already. The council has taken on considerable responsibility. They've hired a member of the community to, to, to help uh, the community with packaging. Um, they've had, uh, on several occasions, confidential in information that's been passed to them without an NDA from Nokia, which is something that Nokia has never done. Um, and said, okay, you guys are the MIMO Community Council, we trust you, you know, we can't tell this to 3,000 people because it's going to be on the front page of newspapers, but, you know, get ready, we're going to be releasing something next week, or uh, this feature is in the next release, and uh, we want to start having people talking to it, who do you suggest we should talk to from the community, and so on. So the council has really been a figurehead for putting engaged community members in connection with the right people within Nokia to make sure that that community empowerment is happening. Um, oh, we've also, we've also taken care of the rebranding of the website. That was a community, uh, MIMO community uh, initiative. Um, coordination of the content of the MIMO summit. So this is community organized summit now. Um, for the most part, two days out of three was completely community organized. And uh, choosing applications from the, the community community developed applications for special attention so that they would be ported to MIMO 5 in, ad in advance, so that there would be some funding available to ensure that, that developers were working on them. And um, basically, uh, as I said, serving as a funnel to make sure that the, the best people for attention uh, in the community get, get that attention from Nokia, and we've got a very positive community experience moving forward. Next MIMO Community uh, Council election is, is coming up next month. And um, uh, the next, uh, and uh, the, so there you go. The MIMO Community Council is the voice of the community. Thank you very much. <laughs> I've left uh, 10 minutes for questions, so um, does anybody have any questions? Yes, we'll use the mics quick words on, on the general satisfaction of the community after everything has been deployed. So, uh, I mean, uh, some feeling that you have been within the community, do you think that some, there are still some people who maybe just dropped the community because they, they didn't like the way things were going or, or just uh, are so in constant complaint? Uh, or it's just something that is quite... Well, can there's, um, you can never please all the people all the time. Yeah, um, and in fact, you can never please all the people any of the time in... Um, in the MIMO community because there are people who, as I said, it's a diverse community and there are, you know, there are opposite, polar opposites in there. People are at attracted to the device uh, and if you're a device geek then f maybe you're not that into free software and people are attracted to the software platform and if you're a free software geek then maybe you're not so interested in making compromises to have the device work magnificently, right? Uh, so there is the we want everything open a school of thought, and there is the um, uh, this hardware sucks school of thought, <laughs> and there is <laughs> uh, and there is a there there are people who will complain for everything. There is the the there are people who that this is too expensive. Uh, there are people who will say uh, anything from all of the range of complaints that you can possibly imagine about a telephone or about a, a, an internet device. That, that we, we, get, we get them all. You can't keep everybody happy, but I think that the overall satisfaction level of the community has dramatically improved from three years ago. Um, and if you think of five years ago when the, when the first MIMO release came out, or five years ago, uh, when the Nokia 770 came out, 
Uh, this was essentially, you know, it was, it was a community project. They were working with upstream projects uh, within Nokia, for sure. Um, but there was essentially no hooks there for people to start hacking on the software, right? Um, the, the, essentially, the way that people contributed to the MIMO community was to write MIMO applications. The, most of the platform was uh, not closed because most of the platform was open, but upstream. So it was a kind of a big gelatinous blob, right? Um, I think that's improved because we've made sure that, that com the community has, uh, has been more empowered. We've made sure that uh, they feel listened to, represented. I think that Nokia developers now understand the community uh, better and, and are starting to engage the community more. Um, it's, it's a constant process, so it's, it's like it's a gradient. But this has been from, if you think of from the, from the days of the 770 to now, there's absolutely no difference. It's light years apart. If the next speaker wants to come up and set up their laptop, I'm, I'm perfectly happy with them doing that, by the way. Good. Are there any other questions? About the, the community council in, in itself, people interested in the, the, the governance model? Or? Yeah, uh, uh, I'm sorry, but I, I don't really know uh, what my MO, uh, what is the, the, the piece of software, what is the platform for. I'm, I'm sorry about that. Uh, so it could be, if you can just say in two words what it is for, it can okay. help me to understand the kind of issue you may be facing. I'm, I'm sorry. So MIMO is a Linux kernel-based software platform which is installed on devices like this. This is a phone. Uh, it doesn't have a SIM card in it right now, but uh, uh, that one does. Uh, so it's, it's, it's a complete software stack. So uh, MIMO is the, a distribution in some sense, which is why I guess I'm, I'm here. Um, it's a, it's a Debian-based uh, distribution for mobile devices. Okay, perfect of this kind of form factor. Okay. And what, what, what are the, uh, I'm sorry. To, uh, uh, that was more than two words, by the way. Yeah, and, and, and uh, what are the strategic decisions that, you, are, that you know, the council is facing or the community is facing, just to have an idea of what are the key, key hot issues that the, the, either the community and the governance system that has been put in place are taking by now? The key hot issues, right? Yeah, so some of the key issues, so, so that I can, I can start having an idea of the, what are the kind of issues that you have to address well, at this point? I, I, I did mention um, that there are some closed components, there are some closed source components in the platform. And so it's a constant process of getting the things that can be opened, opened. There's some, obviously there are, there are partner agreements and there are uh, all sorts of reasons why things might be closed. Um, but the idea is that anything that can be opened should be open. And that's a, that's a constant process. Um, ensuring that, for example, documentation is developed in the community. This is, I say documentation because my, my thing. Ensuring that documentation is written in the community rather than behind closed doors and then you get 100 pages of, of docs dumped over the wall. That's the, kind of, that's the kind of thing that I'd like to ensure that we're... So we've, for example, all of our docs are in a wiki. Uh, almost all of our docs are in a wiki. So thank you very much. Uh, I'm going to be around all weekend. And I will uh, leave the stage to the next speaker. <laughs>